I think audiences want to feel again. Even when it comes to big blockbuster entertainment, people want stories that mean something, that have real emotional weight. Audiences want stories about real people facing real hardships, engaged in real meaningful relationships. A giant atomic lizard can only get you so far if you don't care about the people on the ground that give him context. That seems to be one of the main things people are responding to with Godzilla Minus One, is the human element. I saw the movie in a relatively crowded theater and the people there clapped at certain parts, they went aww at others. That was the best installment yet, said the woman behind me after the film was over, and I can't say I disagree really. Not only is Minus One probably the best looking, the most viscerally destructive Godzilla has been in a long time, it's also maybe the most well realized his human counterparts have been since the 1954 original. In post-war Japan, a kamikaze pilot returns home after shirking his duties, after freezing up during a deadly encounter with Godzilla. The man's parents are dead, his house is destroyed, the man is racked with survivor's guilt, haunted by shame. The man meets a young woman looking after an orphaned girl, and together they approximate something like a traditional family unit, a small piece of an entire country working to rebuild itself. Until eventually, Godzilla returns to wreak havoc and set them all back again, from zero to minus one. The immediate post-war is such a good setting for a Godzilla movie because it really drives home the idea of the monster as a consequence of man. In this case, not just American atomic testing, but an Imperial Japan's eagerness for war. Were the country not already so depleted, both in resources and morale, who knows how they might have fared against an existential threat like Godzilla. Minus One is a story about men trying to find their place in the world after life as a soldier. It's about how, even after all the peace treaties have been signed and after everyone has left the battlefield, there are still some men for whom the war rages on. For some men, the memory of battle, of the others who got left behind, only mutates and grows stronger. In Minus One, our hero struggles to reconcile his innate will to live with a culture where dishonor is worse than death. Where a man's dignity, the idea that he's even a man at all, is inextricably linked with his ability to make the ultimate self-sacrifice when called to do so. It's an idea that has a specific connotation with Japanese samurai tradition, but could just as easily be applied to all men in times of war. Minus One is about a country that, like the Godzilla films themselves over the years, is driven to reinvent itself to stay afloat, where men must learn to more value their lives if they're to be the masters of not just their own, but their country's destiny. The movie shows the character of Noriko entering the workforce, which was fairly new for Japanese women at the time. The movie also has a lot to say about a people's relationship with their government. When Godzilla attacks, both the American and Japanese government are unwilling or unable to help, apart from a couple of battleships, for fear of aggravating tensions with the Soviet Union. And so it's left up to a group of citizens, mostly ex-soldiers, to try and thwart the menace themselves. The movie presents a form of patriotism that exists apart from any government. A patriotism defined not by a flag or any one leader, but by people working together towards a common goal. The movie presents an ethos of societal self-determination in the face of bureaucratic inaction. Is the film maybe a bit too melodramatic at times? Sure. Does it drag a bit in the second half? Maybe. But I'll take a bit of deliberate earnest melodrama, a story that means what it says, over an aloof sarcastic quip any day. In contrast with Japan's struggle to rebuild, there's Godzilla's uncanny ability to regenerate damaged flesh. Not only does it look cool, not only does it give a sense of how Godzilla can take so many artillery shells to the head and keep on ticking, it also reinforces this idea of a country in a race with despair. Fighting Godzilla is like rolling a boulder uphill. Rebuilding a country after a war is like building a sandcastle at high tide. In the years immediately following the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, a Japanese citizen might look up as a plane flew overhead and wonder if it was a B-52 about to obliviate their entire world again. That's the kind of feeling Godzilla invokes when half his face gets blown off and he just grows it right back again. A sense of complete helplessness, of smallness. In fact, I don't know if any Godzilla movie has so effectively gotten across the idea of our titular menace being the living embodiment of atomic devastation as Minus One has. Battleships crumple like wet paper. Buildings are strewn apart like they're made of matchsticks. Not since the original Godzilla from 1954 have any of the 
movie so viscerally invoked the devastation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Writer-director Takashi Yamazaki also served as the film's visual effects supervisor, and this is honestly the way it needs to be for films of this scope. You need someone that really knows what they're doing, who has some sense of how the final image is going to look, instead of someone who's just going to stick actors in front of a green screen and hope for the best. With Godzilla Minus One, Japan has officially caught up with America on visual effects. While the effects in Shin Godzilla were great on the whole, there are some scenes that don't quite measure up to the others. Godzilla Minus One, meanwhile, is probably the best looking and most convincing the big guy has been in a while, and allegedly on a budget of only $15 million. It's funny because when I got home from the theater, I then saw the trailer for the upcoming Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, a new entry in the modern American version of the character, and it was a real whiplash to go from the grounded, lovingly realized version of the character to this garish, slapdash looking attempt at a cinematic universe. Some people, in defending the American films, have been comparing them to the more light hearted renditions of Godzilla from the past, but the problem is, I have eyes, and this looks like puke. This looks like it has more in common with Fortnite than it does all monsters attack. Godzilla can be many things, and I get that there's maybe a different creative intent here, but if this is the best America can do, then I don't want it. I want more of Godzilla Minus One. I don't want any more of Godzilla X Kong. With a heartfelt story, an endearing cast of characters, and a careful handcrafted approach to visual effects spectacle, Godzilla Minus One follows up on the success of 2016's Shin Godzilla by continuing to both reinvent and bring the character back to its roots. It's both one of the best in the series and in a presently torpid cinematic landscape, one of the best, most universally crowded crowd-pleasing movies in general to hit the theaters in some time. In conclusion, Godzilla Minus One is a pretty good movie. Epilogue. If you liked uh, Godzilla Minus One, I have another video that uh, I took a look at some uh, Japanese post-war cinema. Some movies about uh, the atomic bomb, about the reconstruction of Japan. There were elements of Minus One that reminded me of some of these movies. Some movies from Yasuhiro Ozu. And I wasn't sure how much of it might be a direct reference to some of these films or how much of it might just be kind of uh, drawing from the same shared history. For instance, the character of Noriko might be a reference to uh, the Noriko archetype from Ozu's films. There's a scene where our hero Koichi gets covered in black rain, and I wasn't sure if that might be a reference to a, a similar scene in 1953's Hiroshima. The point is, if you liked Godzilla Minus One, and if you're interested in sort of Japanese post-war history or some movies from that time period, I'm not, a, not saying I'm an expert, but I did a video about it which uh, is linked in, I think, it's probably linked in this little box up in the corner. Okay, goodbye.